Come on, we're practicing. You can do it. Whatever. I don't know how this training is supposed to help me. What do you mean? You keep getting beat up at the bar. You have to practice so you can protect yourself. Yeah, but half the time I've had just a little bit too much uh, bread water, if you know what I mean. I mean, you can just not drink as much? I mean, I could. <laughs> I'm not an alcoholic, but I mean, do I want to? <sighs> Fine, whatever. There's another option. Uh, what? Another option? You mean like some kind of drunk karate? Well, I mean, kinda. Yeah, more like drunken kung fu. <coughs> Ah, what was that for, jerk? So yeah, let me tell you about it. What's up guys, it's the only ninja wearing aviators and a superhero hat, and welcome to the Modern Ninja channel. Today we are continuing on our journey to talk about every single martial art in existence. It's a journey that I started quite a little bit ago, so if you wanted to catch up, you can because there's a playlist in, you know, one of the corners just for you guys. However, this one in particular is a little bit special. It's been pushed to the front of the list because of you guys. Yes, you guys. So it is time to talk about the style of drunken kung fu. Uh -huh. So let's start with something that I actually didn't even know until I started researching this video. Drunken Kung Fu or Drunken Fist is not one actual individual martial art. Uh, what? Yeah, I know, it surprised me too. It's actually a general name for all styles of Chinese martial arts that imitate movements of a drunken person. So yeah, the more you know. Brandon. However, these styles do have a pretty ancient origin that can, for the most part, be traced back to Buddhist and Taoist religious communities. The Buddhist style is related to the Shaolin Temple, while the Taoist style is based on the Taoist tale of the drunken eight immortals. The eight immortals were basically legends in Chinese mythology, with each immortal's power being transferred to a vassal that can bestow life or evil. A lot like how Rava and Vatu are to the Avatar in the Last Airbender series. But I'm getting sidetracked, so we'll get back to that in a minute. But Drunken Fist has a very unusual body movement, obviously because they're mimicking drunk people and their unpredictability. What does it mean when there's a picture of a skull? Oh, good stuff! <laughs> It's also a relatively balanced style that includes various forms of attacks and defense, whether that's uh, striking, you got grappling, locking and joints, dodging, weapon work, ground fighting, and even aerial combat. Now, let's be clear, there's not a ton of historical sources out there, which makes it quite difficult to pinpoint the time or place that Drunken Fist was actually created. But it's likely that it appeared in different places at different times all on its own, because, you know, every town has their drunk idiot. <laughs> So there was plenty of inspiration to go around. However, the earliest written reference to drunken fists or drunken boxing is in the novel Water Margin. I'm really hoping I'm pronouncing that right, but you know, I'm probably not. And that is thought to have been created somewhere around the late 1200s to mid 1300s. But like I said before, there's tons of variations of Drunken Fist and Drunken Kung Fu that kind of came, you know, around on their own without interactions from other schools or other styles. So it's very likely that it could be much older than that. But since there are so many styles of Drunken Kung Fu, let's go over some of them. Like I said before, the Buddhist style is attributed to the Shaolin Temple. According to some, this specific Drunken style was first introduced in the Song Dynasty. Legend has it that a famous martial artist named Liu Kuizan, and I am, again, probably not pronouncing that right, I'm sorry, but legend had it Liu drunkenly killed a person by accident and tried to hide out in the Shaolin Temple to avoid trial. Now, despite his monk vows, he still continued drinking wine because of course he did. And the monks were definitely not cool with it. And so they tried to kick him out of the monastery by force. However, while completely drunk, he defeated more than 30 monks on his own. And after seeing this, they praised his skills and thus the drunken style was adopted from him by the monks. Like the actual monks that didn't drink. Now, is this story true? Mm, I don't really know. Nobody knows. He might have beaten 30 people, he might have beaten three people and exaggerated it, or it could be all crap altogether. But such is the life of ancient tales. 
Regardless of the true factor, let's switch to the Dallas style. Now, I already mentioned that it came from eight immortal legends, but who were these legends? And I'm just gonna say this right now, I'm probably gonna pronounce all of these names wrong, so I'm gonna try, um, but if I get it wrong, you know, it is what it is. That's why I'm probably gonna have it written down below, written down below for you. <laughs> I can't speak. Lu Dongbin was the leader of the eight. He carried a sword on his back that dispelled evil spears and would sway back and forth to trick the enemy that he was drunk. Li Tai Bu was a cripple and actually walked with an iron cane. And he actually fought with just one leg. Han Zongyi is the strongest and carries a large cauldron of wine, taking his enemies down with his pure brute strength. I go stairs to the barrel. Lan Kahi carries a bamboo basket and attacks enemies with a swaying waist, using a more feminine posture. This is actually thought to be an ancient cross-dresser or trans person. Zhang Gulao is an old man and rides a donkey. All right, I hope you heard that. She called me a noble steed. She think I'm a steed? Often showcasing his strong, durable kicks from his donkey. Cal Gaoju is the youngest, but a clever and controlled fighter, focusing on joint locks and breaks. Han Zhengzi is a flute playing immortal, destroying and conquering his enemies with his wrists. The Peter Piper played the flute. <laughs> and lastly, he Zhengzi flirts with her enemy so that she can get up close and personal so that she can be effective from a close range. Drinking May flirting with the master. <laughs> Fun fact, many of these characters have a counterpart in the old Jackie Chan Adventures cartoon, and uh, it may be dating me, but I think that's awesome, because I absolutely loved that cartoon. Now those are the main two styles of Drunken Kung Fu, but there's also the style of Southern Fist, and this one is actually thought to be closely related to Wushu. And movements in all of these styles are relatively similar to each other because they all draw inspiration from the same thing, but are very unique and different compared to other martial arts styles for um, obvious reasons. Drink out this juice. It'll quench ya. Nothing's quench ya. But as an example, most styles focus on the vertical posture and balance, but most drunken styles will bend, twist, and turn their torso in all kinds of different directions. Even the fist position isn't a true fist, but mimics a person holding the top of a bottle of wine. And honestly, that's a, uh, that's a sign you're an alcoholic. Yeah, I don't make the rules. But this, along with the continuous bobbing and weaving and slipping, gets the illusion of a instable and lack of focus and helps deceive your opponents to, you know, to make them think that you're actually drunk. And this is what makes Drunken Kung Fu great. It's a surprising style that can be quite effective in the right situation, especially when people, you know, you know, actually think you're drunk. But let me know if there's another style out there you would like me to cover, or what style you'd like me to cover next in this series. I really do like this series because I get to learn a lot. You get to learn a lot. We're all learning here and it's pretty great. And if you would like, I would appreciate you hitting me with the HBO special. Do you know what the HBO special is? I'll tell you what the HBO special is. It's the help a brother out special. So if you want, help brother out. Hit a like, hit the com maybe drop a comment, and subscribe if you're new because I really am trying to reach 75,000 subscribers by the end of the year. It's a big goal, but it's my goal, and I would like to get to that goal. So, you know, that's, that's why I do this. So, <laughs> but until next time, thanks y'all for watching because my name's DJ Moore, this is The Modern Ninja, and I'm out.